You know, in all of the thousands of media messages about healthcare interventions that we've looked at, this criterion, the one about quality of the evidence, is the one that is reported on most poorly um, many times. So uh, just as a, as a starting point here, we put a couple of thoughts on the, on the board here. But to begin with, a study is not a study is not a study. Not all studies are the same. And no study should necessarily be equated with the truth. This is not like Moses coming down from the mountaintop with the stone tablets. Things in medical journals, studies published in medical journals, are not cast in stone. It does not necessarily mean that because you got your work published in the New England Journal of Medicine, that it is truth, that it is fact, that the game is over, that all the information is in, that this is even important. We often lose sight of the fact that journals were meant to be forums for a discussion among scientists, not a source of daily news. So just remember that a study is not a study is not a study. They're not all the same. And now let's talk about study size. Of all the things that we can look at to evaluate the quality of evidence, this might be the easiest one and one of the most important to get our, our heads around. So we're on a spectrum here from a very small study, often a, a single case study, uh, on up to a three-year, 3,000-person randomized clinical trial with a much better, more rigorous uh, design and, and protocol. You know, you may hear scientists talk about the power of a study and the numbers of people being studied and for how long is what provides that power. And so you'll hear scientists talk about, well, this was underpowered to prove an effect. It was underpowered to, to really be effective. And that's what we're talking about here. If the study is too small in too few people for too short a period of time, you don't have the power to make any conclusion. Tied in with study size, we're blown away by how many times in our work on healthnewsreview.org we see stories based on a single anecdote, just a single story about one person's life. Well, there's the old line that the plural of anecdote is not data, that anecdote conveys emotion a heck of a lot better than it conveys evidence. And so let's not be swayed by a single study, let's not be swayed by a single person's anecdote. Finally, tied in with all of these is if you read a story about a study and you don't see something about the limitations of that study, run for the hills. No study is perfect. And in fact, in the journals in which studies are published, there's always a section, often in the discussion section at the end of the paper, labeled limitations. So it's there for the journalists to report on, and yet it often isn't. So if you, the consumer, read about a study and don't hear anything about limitations, red flags, you could be in danger of being misled and getting half a loaf of, of the story. Finally, you know, there's an old saying, uh, a European journalist came up with this a mashup of two terms. We are subject of infoxication in this country, which is information intoxication. A lot of it coming from these topics about misreporting, incomplete reporting on studies. So learn how to evaluate the quality of the evidence.